So it's my great pleasure to continue on a series of videos that we've been looking at about how I can retrain to become an electrician. And is that journey one that is possible, achievable for somebody who's already got skills, already possibly an adult working in a different sector and kind of retrain to be an electrician. And with that in mind, it's my great pleasure to be joined this evening by David Roach. Good evening, David. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. So with this in mind, uh, if you want to step me back four or five years, what were you doing yeah. for employment at that time? Um, at that time, I worked for an import company. So it was mainly data entry, um, going out to see customers, uh, more of a customer service job, but with a lot of traveling involved, sometimes getting to travel to China. But okay, a very so, boring job at times. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure people already listening to the first bit thinking he's doing global <laughs> global travel and now he's deciding uh, maybe to change. Definitely career. sounds more interesting than it is because, to be honest, most of the time it was sat in a factory in just a couple of rooms and then you would just be traveling back to the UK and doing exactly the same thing. Okay. So your job, as I remember, was starting to look a little bit suspect. And then you made a, a few decisions to start maybe looking at a plan B in case your current employer obviously you know, became a little bit more difficult for you to do and it happened to work out. So what was your train yeah. of thought then that suggested from the job you were doing, which sounds like it might have been global, okay, and then you decided maybe to change career? Um, well, if I'm honest, uh, you can, in my particular field, because when I first started there, it was more of a case of who you knew. So it wasn't an easy job to get into. You had to have connections in China, et cetera. Uh, with the advent of the internet, et cetera, most people then could Google a factory that they were to produce particular products for. So it was quite quick to see with the advance of like Alibaba and AliExpress coming into Europe that uh, my job was not going to be as secure as might have been 10 years ago. And then I had to start looking, as you said, for a plan B. The main problem for me is obviously I couldn't do something tech or office based because a lot of children that are coming out of school have already got all these qualifications or are probably more tech savvy than I am. And uh, from a wage point of view as an employer, who are you going to take on? Okay, so with that in mind, you then decided to, to take that leap of faith then, and you, you decided that you probably wanted to be an electrician. Is that true? Yes, yeah. I, um, I looked at all the trades because I thought in trades, you're always going to find work no matter what happens. And then logically, I thought the trade to me that seemed to have the more longevity and, and more opportunity would be electricians because with the EV charging and technology, smart homes, smart tech, I just thought that was something that you could take forward. Okay, so you've made made the decision. Uh, I take it you've yeah. popped along to your local college. And yes. did, you, did you understand what that journey was going to look like as, a, as, a, as a, an adult and you've got a couple of children, dependencies in the house? Did you, did you understand that that was not going to almost happen overnight. It was no short fix. Did you did you truly know when you walked into the college for the first time how long your journey was going to take and where it possibly could end? Yes. Uh, to be honest, the, the tutors that we had were quite open and honest about, about the journey. Obviously, before going to the college, you investigated all the different options, including some of these shortcut courses where you can be... Uh, as they would claim, a, a full electrician in two and a half minutes uh, doing one Google test or something like that. Um, however, I saw it would make more sense to go for the longer journey because that way I would cover more within that field. So I wouldn't come out the other end of a proverbial sausage factory with sort of scratching my head thinking, I don't know what I'm doing. So with that in mind then, so you've enrolled on an evening course. Uh, yeah. You started at level two, I know, because I was part of your journey. So we started that, that journey at level two in the evening. Yes. And obviously that journey's underway. Of all the people you started off your journey with, let's say there was probably 18 people in the class. Yeah. If we fast forward to where you are now, uh, which is obviously a self-employed electrician, and we can debate that term all we like, and we've done that in a previous <laughs> video. So we're going to leave yeah. it there that David is a self-employed electrician. How many other people in that room actually did exactly the same as you and are now self-employed electricians? Self-employed electricians of my particular cohort, I believe I was the only one. Okay, um, and working in the By the time industry? I got to the end of my level three, there was um, three 
two other people that were in the electrician industry as it were right okay so that, that comes back to you must have done something that they didn't do because i think on day one when i meet everybody in in a, an evening based classroom um we all want to be electricians and we know that you get very quickly from me the statement that i could only promise you over three years to become a domestic <laughs> installer but we talk yes. about the fact that you can call yourself an electrician pilot candlestick maker whatever so of course yeah you, you, you must have done something they didn't do. And we're going to try and pick out the, some of those bits to help other people that are also sitting there going, I would like to change career. I would like to be an electrician because everybody in that room, all 18 of you had the same chance and you're the only one yeah. that's that's really got to where we all set out to, to get you to, which was being a self-employed electrician. So you did the level two. How long did that take you to achieve? That took a, a year to achieve in total. Okay. And after that? And then next? after that, one on to level three, which was another two years on top. OK, so with that in mind, then, so it, it, you did two year level three. Now, I know some colleges flip it around the other way and they do two years at level two and um, one year at level three. You didn't do what would be conventionally called a standard level three. Can you just talk me through probably the name of the qualification, if you can't quite remember it, how it broke down and how it maybe varied from other people doing a standard level three? Yeah, um, like the qualification I did was EAL and it was the it's it mainly focused on domestic scope um and then it was for um certification um it would be for planning um commissioning systems uh so yes it, in a nutshell it was more sort of tailored toward domestic however the tutors were expanding the subject outside of the syllabus that was set down for that exam to take us into um industrial uh, so more free phase and things like that. So it, it wasn't limited to the actual syllabus that was supposed to be taught within the course. And I'm sure people are now saying, oh, I've heard the word domestic installer, etc." Well, this course that you've done is offered by City and Guilds and is offered by EAL. And it's over two years that we took that programme when we did it with you. Yeah. And just to fill people in, there is obviously a testing and fault finding end point assessment. So you, you went into a booth in a room to do those. You did the yeah. usual uh, uh, wiring regulations, etc. installation theory style sections. You did one on the building regs. You did one on health and safety. You did a, a small little design. You did a little bit of science and principles and it all come together. But the biggest lump of that course was you had to do yourself a portfolio. And the minute I say portfolio, yes. David, people are thinking MVQ. This is not an MVQ portfolio. It's a portfolio within your qualification, ensuring yes. compliance and testing something in domestic dwellings. We could never remember the title. We used to call it the domestic installer when we were there. Yeah. Now, that portfolio meant that you were visited on site. OK, so you yes. had to prove and demonstrate work that was countersigned as well as work that was seen by your uh, lecturing staff. How did you find yes. that in order to get to where you wanted to be, which was self-employed? What was that part of the journey like for you? Um, if, if I'm honest, at times it was difficult because you had to find, it wasn't just a case that you had to find a job because you couldn't just throw in cables all day long and, and presume you're going to get your qualification from that. You had to make the effort to find jobs or or parts of jobs that would actually hit the criteria that you needed to meet because within the portfolio you had to meet certain criteria a number of times it wasn't a case of you could just use a particular type of cable say like a, a fire rater cable or or if you were to do say um safe isolations and things like that you couldn't just do it once and say i've done that you had to do it a number of times and it had to be proven that you'd done it a number of times as well as Un, unvisually seen from your assessors you had to collect evidence and evidence from customers and supporting documentation to prove that you had done these things so yes it, it was difficult because as you do jobs as a an electrician domestic installer or whatever you might like to call yourself um a lot of the jobs day to day quite repetitive somebody will want a fault sounding out or somebody will want a socket putting outside a fuse board change um, some heating installed but when you're doing your portfolio you have such a like a wide range of stuff that you have to hit it is difficult to be able to make sure you select and find jobs that will tick absolutely every box a number of times to be able to get everything within your portfolio ticked off 
And that goes back to lots of things I hear out there, that you can go to college, and college usually equals knowledge. So in other words, yeah. you can pass written exams, and in some cases, the, the testing and fault-finding elements of an exam. And then you hear people say, well, I've, I've gone out there with these qualifications, and I can't actually do the job because yeah. I have to then get some work experience, work for free, and, and try and convert these college. Now, it sounds like your qualification was vastly set up in order to demonstrate that you could actually do the job. And yeah. obviously you were visited by your college lecturers. I think you have a minimum of 18 on-site hours assessments, uh, yes. usually in six or eight hour slots with you. So you normally get three of those. And obviously as you work through, you know, you've got to prove and demonstrate. I think you had plastic conduit, metal conduit, trunking, metal trunking, uh, fire resistive cables, flexible cables, singles, twin and CPC, SWA, yeah. And I think SY Flex was in there as well. Yeah. I may have missed some. You had to demonstrate those all over two years, which I'd like to think yeah. anyone listening to this bit here is is actually helping you, not hindering you, because lots of people in your your group didn't really complete that portfolio or the on-site visits, did they, David? Um, no. I, I mean, it's understandably difficult. Like like I said, you, you do have to find a wide range of, of jobs and in for some people in certain fields, it is quite difficult to find the jobs. I was lucky as in I would offer work for free just to be able to hit targets, you know. So in my head, although I was doing work for free, I wasn't because I was still achieving what I needed to do. So there were opportunities where, say, there were lecturers at college that would say there were jobs coming up where I think I'm just doing it. Uh, for no charge but i get the bonus of that part of the portfolio ticked off because it might be a job that will hit what i need to hit but also which is cheeky or not but to my advantage you could shadow that person and gain knowledge from seeing what they do how they terminate how they deal with things because obviously in college you're taught a textbook way of dealing with things but in the real world sometimes you get obstacles or other things that you have to overcome that you're not trained to do so shadowing these people for in their eyes free gave me the benefit of being able to see tips and tricks they're picked up over maybe many years of doing the job anyway and that loops back to what we said previously college yeah. is knowledge and in order to be in a position when you got into that position to go and work for yourself you'd gone through lots of different things so you'd gone and worked for free and you'd gone steel conduit, you'd gone onto farms, you'd done motors and et cetera, and limited yourself with domestic style work, even though that was obviously pretty much your focus for the three years you should have been at college to become that domestic installer. Because yeah. going to college on its own, you quickly realised wouldn't be enough that at the end of the three years that you could, if your job changed or you wanted to change job, you wouldn't be able to take that leap forward. And I think that's something yeah. that often people miss. And, and we saw it in our, our classrooms over many years, and you saw it at your group college is a, a, a couple of nights a week it's like taking on a craft skill as in I've yes. learned to do some embroidery or I'm better at baking bread because I've done a short course on that but when you get at the end of it if you haven't applied the skills you've only got a course that you're probably never going to use again and that's very very common in, in FE that people don't convert them so from your experience you worked really hard to get your level two and your level three you read beyond the subject so you'd always come and ask us extra questions and additional stuff you'd contemplated yeah. before um you could put yourself a tester you started doing testing and that on a, away from college and obviously you worked free in order to gain that experience and that led yes. you to obviously completing your course being one of the few that was successful on your course how long after getting your course finished were you working in the electrical industry um to, to be honest, I, was, I actually started working in the, in the electrical industry um, up to the tail end of my course. So I was probably three to four months prior to finishing the course and then starting to do some minor works and, and some other jobs where I was supervised, but gaining sort of real world experience of actually how things will be as, as things move forward. Right. Okay. That, that, so you, you knew, you knew that the only way to get the job changed was to obviously work in the industry. Okay. And take that leap of faith. So you're, yes. you're now offering yourself, and if I remember quite rightly, let's bring us both back in. So members quite rightly is that you were working quite lowly paid, weren't you, for, yes. a, for a builder who was obviously you were, you had a, a QS, somebody 
qualified uh, qualifying supervisor in order to sign yeah. off your work, which was great. And I came out and see you as well. And obviously, that that journey is is probably a difficult one, isn't it? Now financially, you're probably a lot worse off. You know, you've taken a leap of faith, and you're trying to get into that electrical industry. There was no lucky breaks along the way, David. I would suggest. I think you made all your own luck as you got yeah. through. So we're three or four months prior to finishing your course. What's the mindset now? Are, you, are we thinking about getting a van? Are we? Are we? I know you bought a tester, but you know, what, yes. what's the next process? It's because the, 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 course- the next process was I, I was finding I, as I was doing jobs. Obviously, then I'd be um, borrowing equipment as I was having to do certain jobs. Uh, some equipment I already had. Some equipment I'd sort of like flatter my eyelids and ask college, could I borrow kindly for the uh, the week? But I was trying to then make a, a checklist, as it were, of I've used that twice. I need to buy one. And so I would look for cheap starting equipment on eBay. And then obviously my plan was as more and more work came in, I could then upgrade that equipment but at least i had it there because the worst thing to do is to turn up at somebody's house if they have a a job they want you to do and a lot of the times they're very vague when they book you in as to what they want you to do and then you turn up thinking well i i don't have that and i don't have that and i don't have that so they were the kind of things where you then have to get more kit more kit i was working out the back of a car but like everybody probably who's in my position it got to the stage where i had to get a van so yes there was a was a financial burden at the beginning, but but it's worth it longer term. And I'd like to think the course that you did, your level three when you finished <coughs> it, that you did at college over two yes. years. I think you had to in that produce a set of risk assessments. You had to do yes. produce a set of method statements. You had to you do ongoing calibrations of your test equipment and no, write them down. Um, yes. you did variation orders and things like that. So we were always trying to set you up for the day that maybe you invited NAPIT or the NIC to your. A dwelling in this case yes. in order to confirm it because they'd expect to see your public liability and so did we we'd yeah. expect to see a set of risk assessments that covered all the activities that you were carrying out in electrical uh, installs within domestic dwellings so of course you've now accumulated all the materials you need uh, possibly getting that van how long then was it before you you saw i'm, I'm going to remove away from a qs somebody else checking my work off and i'm now going to take a leap of faith i think you went to the nic is that correct Yes, yes. So I went to the NIC. Obviously, um, all of this fell around as as COVID hit. So there was a, a minor delay from the point where I approached um, NIC to ask. And then obviously it was early days of the lockdown. So nobody knew how everything was going to pan out. By the time it got to June, I was contacted by the NIC to say that they were trialling um, inspections, you know, where an inspector would come out, look at your work, interview you and to take it from there so i just took a leap of faith as you would say because they gave me i think only a few days pre-notice that they were going to come out and and see me and um as with everything because i was at the tail end of my qualification and again with colleges and governing bodies and awarding bodies everything was running slow i had my 18th edition certificate I had my uh, level two certificate, but I didn't have in hand my level three certificate. So when the NIC chap came out, understandably, he said that they would have to treat me as if I was a a level two. So I was given, I would say, probably a a slightly more tougher go through on the initial visit than um, had I been with them or had I had every qualification under the sun but i can understand because obviously they don't want to just let any person just let loose on a fuse board the only underline i'd say to that though was anybody who went to the same college i did knows that when um, an assessment happens some of our assessors are probably a bit more hardline than the nic inspector so it was uh, it wasn't too bad <laughs> Okay, oh, but that, that was because we were always setting you up for it when you, we told yes. you that when we did it, and we always offered at our college when we did it. So this is obviously Dave's a, 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 a an old student of ours and a good friend. But the yeah, it's that we're not asking you to pass the course, and lots of people didn't pass your course. We were we were setting you up for that week one journey to end of year three, where you could pass an assessment uh, comfortably yes. and and all the rest of it, which you did do. Um, and obviously you register with the NIC, and now you can self. Uh, certificate your work within domestic dwelling but when you came to do your reassessment okay then things changed slightly didn't they that the you were offered something extra at the second time is that true 
Yes, yes, they, they did say that. Obviously, I could um, take it forward and go for, um, I believe, is it full contractor status, uh, something like that, because I was given a few extra questions just to, to test my knowledge and my boundaries, and they seemed quite comfortable with how I answered and, and suggested I could go that route from a personal point of view of one of those slightly overcautious people who doesn't want to uh, run before they can walk. I decided to stay at my current status with the view that I want to get a number of years behind myself before I'd, I'd think that I was at a level where I should feel confident to just go to that next step. I don't want to be arrogant and just presume, well, just because I know something in a book or, or I know a particular figure that I can just go for it. I thought I'll keep myself within my comfort zone and then take each step as I come to it. But yeah, yeah. We, but we knew when we first met you, Dave, that the opportunity was there for you because even on that first couple of weeks, we knew you were asking all the right questions. The rest of it, we see it many times and lots of colleagues see it up and down the country. But I think we've clearly shown there, haven't we, that it's not just the course, it's the course plus all the effort that it would take in order to completely change career at a certain point in your life when maybe commitments at home are greater that it yeah. isn't just a case of doing a course you did a course plus and that's the message i would like to say to anyone who's thinking about uh, retraining to be an electrician a plumber yeah. plasterer whatever it is is that you've got to put in all those extra bits of effort that the college aren't giving you or, uh, work experience for free that you did reading books i know you were a big fan of, of reading <laughs> stuff and catching me out regularly but it's but that's what's needed. It's not going to fall into place. If, you know, how many people in our group luckily got an adult apprenticeship? I think nobody did. did uh, there was no adult apprenticeships yeah. given given out. It was a case of you either made it as a domestic installer and looked for the future that way, or you didn't get break your way into the electrical industry. Now, having broke into the electrical industry, and hopefully people can see your roadmap to doing that, there's lots of exciting opportunities out there for somebody in the industry and that's the reason yes. you probably wanted to break into it what sort of things take your fancy moving forward to grow you as a, a, a contractor uh, going forward i mean i have my ev qualification so um i believe ev although it's still slow to get going i, I can see that being something that'll be big in in a number of years time especially as people move away from fossil fuel vehicles but um i think one of the more exciting things is going to be smart technologies in houses so you have like the control four and, and things like that where um housing and heating and appliances within the houses are becoming much more smart and, and centrally controlled which i think is is something that that'll be quite interesting going forward uh, and with that comes opportunity, doesn't it? So with, yeah. the, you know, everyone's coming away from gas. We know that. Obviously, we're all coming away from fossil fuels in a car. So that that is going to rapidly accelerate. And you'll be in a position where obviously you can take hold of those opportunities because you, you saw a few years earlier that that was a great opportunity to do it. And, and it still is. If people are watching yeah. and they've got this far into the video. The opportunity is still there but it's one that you've got to go the extra mile, uh, you know what I mean, take yes. the extra effort in, in order to get there. I'd agree with that. Um, the only thing I'd say as well, you know, just going back to earlier where you were saying there was a number of people in my class and, and only so many of us made it through is a bit like what you would say. It is the commitment that goes with it because I know you were saying a lot of people do two years of level two and one year of level three. Yeah. But our one year of level three was actually nearly a full day and a half because we would have to come in very early on the Monday and do the evening course on the Wednesday. Just, so, just, just, just to correct you there, you said level three, you meant level two, Dave. Didn't sorry, you? yes, level two, yeah. yeah the, the, the level two yeah. was almost a two year course. It was just crammed in because we had to do all the extra hours within that one year. Um, and then again, because of those commitments, I think a number of students fell away purely because it is a big burden on your family and on your personal life that you are taking up in effect basically two days of the week one of them being a full day you know not just the evening so yeah. i think uh, a number of people went off there a number of people probably went off into other avenues of the electrical industry because level two is a, a footstep in but you're not limited to just domestic you can follow other paths within the electrical industry from that so yeah and, and that's and, and again level three it 
a bit like you'd probably agree level two is almost spoon fed to you they they practically ram down all the information down your throat level three is more you can learn as much as you want to learn but if you don't want to learn anything you don't have to because it's up to you to make it at that end bit yeah yeah it, it, that was the way i did it yeah but i was yeah, yeah. i, I said you say to you you learn 80 percent of level two and you learn how to apply the 80 percent and the 20 percent you only got obviously when you got to level three as you move forward so if i'm sitting here and i've got just part of the video and i'm thinking to myself i'm, I'm gonna do it I've, I've listened to dave dave's managed to change uh, from flying all around the world on luxury uh first class <laughs> to china eating out, uh, eating out and drinking as much as he can on a regular basis um and he decided that wasn't the life for him and he wanted to go and lay in lofts chase walls and all the all the other <laughs> glamorous stuff that we do as electricians yeah. what would you what would be your key pieces of advice to somebody who's going i'm going to have a go the next time the september comes or a new year comes and my college opens and says there is a course that can possibly lead to the electrical industry what's your advice you'd give to them my advice would be to go for it um but to apply yourself because basically as much as they say they can bring you up it's it's really going to be up to you to push yourself along because there will be times when you'll just be thinking oh but you can get there it, it is doable um but it, it is on you to do it and not to just sit there and moan if your teachers are not so good or if they're not covering what you want to cover um then speak to them you, you you've got to have that two-way communication yeah and be the one be the one in the group is what i would always yes. say be the one that asks more questions be the one that, that you know that, you know you've paid your money get get value for money out the yeah. course and it's like, uh, and don't feel awkward to ask a stupid question because you're never going to know if it was or wasn't a stupid question until you get well yeah. until you get the answer and then you think that was stupid <laughs> But, and again, this is this is a, a subplot, really. But if you're in a college course that, say, is six to nine, or in your case, it was three to nine in the first year, if they're letting you go at half eight, question it, because you're wasting half an hour a week over a period of 30 weeks. How much money have you yeah. spent not to be in a room? Did we ever leave before nine o'clock when we, we did our level two? No. No, we didn't. We, we gave every minute. And, and if you were on a course, take every minute and every opportunity and, and look for work experience, I would suggest, like Dave did, uh, in order to further yourself. And, you know, push and push and push. Sometimes the door won't open. And sometimes people can do all of that. And it doesn't come off. But yeah. historically, for me, the people that put the same effort in as you did, Dave, over those uh, three years, do what you did. They get to the end journey. They get to the position in which they, they wanted to find themselves in. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and like you say, it'd be, it'd be like um, like you were saying about leaving the early. Um, even when you get days where maybe the, the tutor was unavailable or if the college is doing open days, take advantage and go use the testing rigs while you can. Yeah, you came in on yeah, came in on other days, but we we, we, yeah. we, we didn't mind. You know I mean, you came in, used the testing rigs and all the rest of it. You you, you come in, you nip your head in the door. It's not a problem, but it's using what is available to you to get the most out yeah. of it. Okay, so some colleges yeah, may it's, say that's it's, it's maximising what 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 you you've paid for the course. Maximise as much as you can out of it. And would you say now you're in a position where your business, I know we're, we're post the difficult times the world has had, but are you in a position yes. where you think to yourself, oh, I'm, I am an electrician, I do work for myself, and I'm sustaining a lifestyle that I would like at this moment in time? Yes, yeah, I would do. I'd, I'd, say, um, I'd say I'm very fortunate and very lucky. Had I stayed in my old job, I would be jobless, so I'm glad I, I took the leap when I did. But I'm in a position where I get to work every day of the week and and I'm earning and I'm able to keep a roof over my head, which is always the most important thing. So I would suggest yes. on your journey, like many, David, there was no luck involved. It was just hard work and hard work leads to rewards. The harder you work, yeah, the better it can to the end. We'd like to thank you for your time. And I'm sure this is going to pose some questions within the comments. I'd like <laughs> to think when the video is released, Dave, that maybe you could also answer some of those and maybe use some of sure. your own personal experience. And again, we yep. always like everybody's feedback. What was your journey like? Did you make it into the electrical industry? I've got another gentleman that is uh, was did the course, I think, the year before you. Um, Big Ben, did you ever meet Ben? Oh, yes, yes, yes yeah, Big Ben, Big yes. Ben. Now, Big Ben, we're hopefully going to get him on at some point. Ben went from level two with me 
and he got himself a full apprenticeship qualification, including AM2 and the portfolio completed. So David was happy to go on and become a domestic installer of the option from the NIC to be full scope. In other words, to do any work that he wanted to under his own company name. And then we'll have a look at Ben, hopefully in the future, that actually can walk around. Dave, I'm glad you're a long way away. And call himself an electrician. <laughs> so, and we've had that debate before. So yeah, yeah we'll hopefully pick him up. There's tons of opportunities in this industry if you make those opportunities and those um, chances that you're given work. But your comments and feedback below will help others and your experiences as well. So we'd like to thank you, David, for joining us this evening and passing no on problem. your time. You. And hopefully we'll catch up with you again real soon. Okay. Take care. Thank you very much. No